Well, hello folks, this is Jamil Surfer for Gun Circle Reviews. We're here in Phoenix, Arizona at Enlo Custom Guns with Marty. How you doing, bud? Good. Marty, name of this video is Refinishing versus Touch-Up. What's the difference? And what are the needs of refinishing sure. versus touching up? Is it worth it? <laughs> you know, I'm, a lot right. of people get confused. Right. You and I had a discussion about it, and you said, yeah, there's still a lot of confusion. Mm -hmm. Let's dispel the rumors okay. and the myths, okay? Well, I mean, uh, we have a few examples of finish, but uh, obviously you got a lot of uh, Birchwood Casey products here uh, discuss it, to discuss uh, some of the stuff that they offer, right? Um, there, there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of reasons why you would want to have something around to do a touch up, right? Um, and then uh, of course, uh, some people might go full ham and try to refinish an entire gun with say something like cold blue. Um, it's not something I would necessarily recommend, um, but I know people do it. Um, mm -hmm. and not to say that I haven't, uh, save the finish on a part before, like say a screw with uh, like some cold blue, mm -hmm. but there's kind of procedure to it. And even then, uh, is it going to be as durable as some of the other finishes that are out there in the market? No, absolutely not. Um, so, you know, one of the things is like, uh, you have these touch up pens here. I've actually never used, I don't even know that I've ever seen a touch up pen actually, but uh, I've used, I've used some of these products quite a bit. Um, but, uh, you know, like you have the super blue, aluminum black, and even then they have a cold blue. And uh, you, you kind of have to be careful around some of these things because uh, um, you, you kind of have to treat them. Uh, you kind of have to treat them as if they're fragile at first because uh, they're not going to match totally. Uh, mm -hmm. So uh, we, we have some examples here of just some some different finishes, um, but. Uh, you know, why, why would you have, like, say, a touch-up pen or some cold blue to begin with? Let's say uh, there's a scratch across the top of your slide, and it's just a shiny spot, right? Um, this is a slide here. It has a metal finish on it, but you can kind of see some dings on it. Um, if you took something like, say, the touch-up pen, you know, it would just darken those spots, so it wouldn't, it wouldn't stand out. This, is, this has kind of a gray finish on it, um, in which case, if you took black and kind of put it on the edge there, some of those spots just wouldn't pop out as much, right? Uh, versus, like, say, uh, let's say you have a, let's say you have a high value gun, um, and you've got a scratch on it. Uh, it's going to be kind of like a touch of paint on a, on your car. Uh, would you touch it? Would you would you touch up the paint on your car, uh, it, it, like with a little touch up paint with a little brush? Yeah, it kind of stands out, right? It, mm -hmm. It's not going to match, right? No, no. So there, there's reasons to and not to, right? And that's why I kind of said that the. If you're, if you're going to discuss these things, uh, you know, it, it, it's worthy to have a, a, a discussion on all finishes, not just, uh, not just some of this stuff. But uh, really, that's kind of what these are for. Is these, are, these are kind of meant to do, like, uh, cover, cover up what you've got. I mean, obviously, with aluminum black, we were, you and I were having a conversation about sight install. Um, you know, there's times that, uh, you know, you get aluminum punches, and you kind of punch it, you, you punch a sight in if you're... Uh, sight pusher doesn't work or something, or maybe you've got some sort of issue with it. But uh, you, as you tap in aluminum, yeah, you end up with aluminum uh, on the sight. And that's a nice way of not damaging the sight, but then you end up with some aluminum afterwards. So you might cover it up with, uh, with the aluminum, uh, aluminum touch-up pen or something else like that. I mean, I've seen guys go as far as using Sharpies. I don't recommend that. No. But, uh, well, know. these are like Sharpies mm -hmm. for metal, basically. Yeah. This is like a Sharpie mm -hmm. that I've used these um, I've never used this super black hmm. pens. I've never tried them. Hmm. I'll, tr I'll try yeah, them. I, I've never seen them before. So, they... But I have used these uh, aluminum black and Presto gun blue pen mm -hmm. a lot. Yeah. Because I, I did a video uh, at the beginning of the channel in which I was using a Brownell screwdriver mm -hmm. uh, hex and I scratched an AR frame mm -hmm. receiver. And it was a little spot. Yeah. So I went. Yeah, it's kind of it. it's kind of perfect for that, especially with like aluminum black. But uh, let's say let's, let's say you got a gouge across it. It's just gonna. No, it, gouge. It doesn't, it, it doesn't cover anything up. What it does is it uh, at least with aluminum, it, it, it has a tendency to just kind of darken the area. Darken the area. Now yeah. there's a downside too. Um, let's say you're taking something like uh, super blue and you're putting it. It, it, it kind of depends on the finish, right? But like, uh, um, you know, I, I, I have an example here of NP3. NP3 is a really nice durable metal finish. Uh, if you put super blue on it, let's say you're trying to touch up a, a site or something, right? You put uh, that on the nickel, it stains the nickel. 
Okay. Uh, so it actually stains the nickel, in which case you can't rub it off, you can't get it off, right? Mm -hmm. uh, let's say, uh, you know, just MP3 is, is nickel with a, it's nickel with a Teflon blended in, but it's still basically nickel, nickel right? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, obviously if you have a nickel finish, same thing. Uh, you know, I used to use cold blue to uh, check parts to see if they were chrome uh, or stainless, right? So like uh, if you got a stainless steel part, Super Blue will turn stainless, right? It'll usually kind of turn, not all, not always, but sometimes it'll turn stainless. Uh, but uh, let's say cold blue, you would actually test it to see, okay, is it chrome? In which case, uh, actually you'd run uh, more of a Super Blue on something and check it, you know, if you were trying to refinish it. Well, we used to, I used to refinish a lot of guns in MP3, still do. Um, and then you have other processes like, uh, this is Armor Lube, this is kind of a, it's kind of like DLC, right? Diamond light coating, but uh, it, it is it is a very durable finish. Uh, this is actually a stainless steel barrel, and uh, I can sit here and scrape a file across. It's really hard. Um, there's no touching this up. Mm -hmm. uh, let's say let's say you're trying to refinish this. Uh, basically, the entire finish, the entire surface has to be removed, uh, mm -hmm. and then and then you would have to do it. Let's say you were trying to run this into a blue. Well, this stainless steel won't blue, but. Uh, if you were trying to put another DLC process on it, the, the finish has to be completely removed. Same thing with uh, MP3. Let's say you were trying to put uh, a finish on MP3. It needs to be completely removed. Then you got this uh, Glock slide over here. That uh, Glock slide has a, a factory finish. Uh, uh, if it's made in America, I believe it's a, they use a, some sort of gas nitride is what they call mm -hmm. it. And so it, it's a process by which the, the surface, like. Uh, MP3 or armor lube, uh, it is a, it is a, it, it's a plating that's applied to the exterior, so it's kind of a candy shell. Uh, and this stuff is the the surface of the metal is changed, and so the surface of the metal is actually much harder, right, than the than the uh, the, the 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 steel that's on the inside, and so when you have this machined, this this is a good opportunity to talk about touch ups, right, where okay now you have bare metal. Uh, you don't want it you, you don't want it to rust, um, but maybe you don't want to have the whole thing refinished either. I mean, there's different options like Cerakote or Duracote or uh, you know, uh, you were talking about your guy uh, Black Nitride. Black nitride yeah. dot com, right? In which case, this thing could be renitrided, and you would have the same finish here as you would here. Um, but there's a cost associated with that. Mm -hmm. Well, if you wanted the the RMR mounted on there, you got to do the machining. Um, you could super blue it, in which case it turns it black and it is it, a... It gives us some level yeah. of protection. Some level of protection. You're going to want to... Once you apply it, you have to oil it. That's another thing, yes, right? Another uh, thing, yeah. Because if guys don't, yes, it kind of leaves a little surface rust. Is it going to be as protective as that nitride finish? No, it won't. But it, it might be a better option than, say... Leaving it as is. Well, because then you're going to have to take it to somebody who can who can process it. I mean, more than just... Like, you can't just hand the slide to somebody. Somebody has to disassemble the parts. Is that channel liner in there that needs to be removed or the ways it melts and it ruins the bath or whatever it's going to do but uh, these are reasons why you know maybe you would want to just buy a touch-up uh, some sort of touch-up pen or maybe even the guys doing it I mean they didn't do it but maybe they had their reasons maybe you said hey I'm going to do this and they, they, they don't do I mean, this was done by Battleworks okay and Battleworks does only clock slides okay okay uh, they don't touch any other brand mm -hmm. they do they do the uh, all sorts of different red dots. Mm -hmm. By the way, I'll put in a, a discount code that you can get 15% off sending your slice to Battleworks. Um, and the cool thing about their their system is, is they, they will refinish it for you mm. at a cost. Yes. Okay? Yeah. But if, like I said, no, that's okay. Send it as is. Mm -hmm. I wanted to save money. Mm -hmm. um, and I was thinking just cold blowing it for the time being because sure. this light is new. Okay. For example, if I want to do this pistol here, mm -hmm. um, this is an old, this is my Franken Glock mm -hmm. that you worked on mm -hmm. and pretty much everybody has worked on and has the same process done. Mm -hmm. So I and, will eventually... And so, and so are aware, we, we've already checked this gun. So oh, we, yeah. we, we've, oh, yeah. already, we've already been through this gun here. Yeah, so, so, we, so yeah. we've really checked this gun mm -hmm. before. Magazine right, is back right, here. Yeah. Um, so. This one will get refinished eventually, mm -hmm. okay? But this one here, I am not going to refinish right. this this uh, pistol, this slide, just because of that. Right, right. So cost effectiveness sure. or, you know, 
Well, and, and, and so here, here's another thing when we were talking about uh, metal finishes and, and durability, right? So one of the more common finishes to have on a gun is just to do uh, bluing, right? So bluing, but uh, you know, you, you've got your gun in a, in a Kydex holster, um, or let's say even a leather holster. Well, uh, drawing in and out, in and out, uh, you're gonna wear the finish off the gun. Mm -hmm. And you could do it in Cerakote, you could do it in, in uh, some of the other finishes. Uh, even Glocks with, uh, you're saying this is Gen 5. Yep. Mm -hmm. So Gen 5 has a diamond-like coating, uh, very similar to what Armor Lube is. But then it has a nitride heat treat process as well. It actually has, it ha actually has two layers, right? has two layers is reinforced. This still wears in a Kydex holster. This mm -hmm. still wears in it. But in a handgun, you want that durability because handguns are beat up. I mean, that thing's stick, is sticking off your off your hip. Every time you take a handgun, you go anywhere, these things get scratched, they get moved, and I'm hitting the hammer, but they run into things all the time. And a gun that's carried, you're gonna want a durable finish on it. You're gonna want something like a plating in it. You know, and not to say, you know, there are paints out there that are actually quite durable. And one of the reasons why you might want that is a barrier chemistry wise between say like, if you're in an ocean environment, right? In an ocean environment, uh, salt spray, uh, even just sweat, uh, that's hard on guns. And uh, no, so and, they and have a tendency to pit. And yeah. depends where in the country you live mm -hmm. in. In Arizona, mm -hmm. we can, for for the most part, mm -hmm. leave guns unfinished. Yeah. Uh, it, you would you would be surprised some of the guns that I've even in Arizona that I've seen that I've I've been I've been uh, shaken to see how how bad their finishes. Uh, oh, had, like had Dave's held up. bolt on his <laughs> on his bolt action rifle. Oh no, I, I I've seen much worse. But uh, the thing is, is that um, you know. Uh, you're always, if you carry yeah, a gun, you're all, there's always going to be something. I mean, yeah, you're uh, going to be rubbing mm -hmm. and then depending, you probably you know, get rained on. Or right. Well, when it, it rains, and it's been raining for the last two days here. Well, and you might ask yourself, well, is it worth it spending the money on a fa fancy finish or something? It's like, it, it really depends on what you want. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I, I pointed it out to you that, uh, let's say you were going to do like a, a very fancy camo job on a rifle, right? And I have run into a lot of rifles uh, that uh, did just fine with spray paint on them. Mm -hmm. And, you know, uh, uh, what was it, LAPD, I used, to, I used to see their bolt action rifles all the time and I always knew them because they always had this really gross like spray paint all over them. And for the most part, it's because it's a police department and they just need a gun that shoots accurately and they don't care about the finish, in which case, on a bolt action rifle, it doesn't see anywhere near the abuse that a, that a, a handgun is gonna see. Now, having said that, if you're creating something that's like heirloom quality, if you really want something that you're, you're, you're paying top dollar for a reason, yeah, you're gonna want that high grade finish on there. But uh, is it absolutely necessary? No. It, it, is it a nice thing? If you, if, if you want like the absolute top quality as far as like those goes, yeah, you're gonna go that extra mile for a finish. If, you're, if, if, if a gun is a beater to you, right? Even if it's your carry gun and you know it shoots well, you do all that stuff, maybe you want the finish, maybe you don't. Maybe you're willing to live with it and just know that you oil it all the time. I, I, like, to, I like to err on something that's a lot more durable, but once again, there's a cost associated with that. And you gotta send it to somebody who, who, can, who can do that. I mean, like I say, we used to do MP3 on so much stuff and I, I wouldn't necessarily throw an MP3 on just everything, but uh, uh, you know, it, it's not without its faults. And same with Tenifer, not you know nickel or any of those things. Uh, they they all have their their quirks. They will wear. You know, uh, MP3 has a nice lubri in, lubricating property, but uh, you know if it's carried up against the skin, uh, nickel, nickel will turn green. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, you 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 put that in a salt air environment uh, for long enough, yeah, it's going to start to show pits. Is it going to be the worst thing in the world? No. I mean, we were looking at that Gen 3 Glock today that's scratched up and messed up, but. It, or uh, Gen, Gen 2, 2. Gen mm -hmm. 2, and it still works. It's still it, it, it's still perfectly functional. It doesn't look great, but it looks it, it looks it looks used, mm -hmm. and it shows the patina. But that gun has definitely been carried. You know, it's uh, been used. Yeah. Uh, so so th there's different benefits to both, and, and like say uh, something like a, a coating. This is this is a, a product we used to sell called Poly T. It's very similar to Cerakote. But uh, the thing is, is that as far as a finish goes, it's a barrier between the metal and the, the, the rest of the environment. Does it wear quicker? Does it chip? Yes, it does. But uh, it, it, also has that, it also has that extra little bit where you don't see pitting in those things. You don't see pitting like you would say with, with bluing or, or some of the other finishes that are direct onto the metal. So, Well, that's, that's a, I mean, a great 
way to describe it so that the viewer can make a decision mm -hmm. whether they're going to go uh, to refinish, in which refinish, mm -hmm. or just basically, in my case, I'm not going to refinish just because of this. Sure. I'm just going to touch up. Mm -hmm. And in case, the way I learned this, you know, tell me if I'm wrong, when I learned this uh, was clean it with alcohol, heat it up with a with a air, hair dryer a little bit, mm. uh, take a Q-tip and pour the super blue onto another, don't stick the Q-tip on the bottle because mm. you might contaminate sure. it. Sure. That's what I was told, just pour it a little bit on another container, or another mm -hmm. place, swab it, heat it up again, and then oil it. That's a good plan. Uh, yeah, the, the heat the heat definitely helps with that kind of stuff. Uh, but yeah, you wanna you wanna let it kind of set up, and then of course, yeah, you wanna hit it with a with a nice preservative oil. And I, I mean, you and I have had discussions on this before because uh, there's lubricants and there's preservatives, as far as I'm concerned, mm -hmm. and, and they don't always work as well. Yeah. Uh, so if if you're using REM oil, for instance, REM oil is a nice lubricant that dries into a Teflon film. It sucks as a preservative, right? Yeah. <laughs> and as a CLP, yeah. mm -hmm. which is you know. Mm -hmm. The P is preservative. Sure, yeah. Uh, so you can use that. Um, but there's all, that's a, a, a post-finish. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, I learned the hard way. I mean, not the hard way, because I was told from the beginning, mm -hmm. never put the Q-tip on the mm -hmm. new bottle. Sure. Just pour a drop or two onto another surface and then, you know, go ahead and do it. So sure. That's awesome. Well, Marty, do appreciate you telling me all about this. Uh, I know there's a lot of information here between finish and all these materials from Virtual Casey. I think they're all great products for what they are. Yeah. They are just, they are not, you're not going to refinish with mm -hmm. this. You're going to touch up your mistakes. Right. And so we're going to go ahead. I'm going to try to do this on my own. Okay. And see how bad I <laughs> mess it up. And if I mess it up, I'm going to bring it to you. Okay. But, you know, they did a really good job on this, on cutting this at Battleworks. Mm -hmm. They did a really good job. And again, guys, I'll put the discount code and you're, you'll be able to get a 15% discount in everything except red dots. So you get a discount code on plates, on the cutting, screws, but not on the red dots mm -hmm. themselves. Don't be greedy. <laughs> so I do appreciate your help, Marty. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Thanks for tell me all about what to do and what not to do. Sure. Because there's a lot not to do here. So yeah, I'm not gonna refinish the whole gun with Super Bowl. So guys, again, thanks for watching this video. Please like this video, share this video on the dog rush yawn. And please, like always, remain healthy, stay safe, and definitely have fun at the range. Thank you for watching Gunstock Reviews. There we go. Please visit our website at www.gunstockreviews.com for more exclusive content. Please visit our Patreon page at www.patreon.com slash gunstockreviews. Your contributions would be greatly appreciated and help us grow our selections and frequency of videos.